it's Professor Jennifer again, and welcome to day two of Wonder Zone. Well, it's great to see you guys again today. Thanks for joining us. Well, like yesterday, I wonder if you can choose one of these. Are you feeling cheeky? Or are you feeling very sad? Or are you feeling happy? <gasps> What's this one? Are you looking <gasps> a bit puzzled? What's going on? Anyway, I'm feeling this today. I'm full of love. I hope you are. Anyway, so today we're going to be looking to some fantastic experiments. Did you manage to find one of these? A white coat and some goggles. I hope you did. Keep sending your photos in to us. Now, today we've got a couple more of our professors. Professor Wright, Professor Wright, where are you? Professor Wright? Ah, there you are. And Dr. Hubble, Dr. Hubble, give us a wave, Dr. Hubble. I can see you. Okay, be back. See you later. Oh no, Professor Hodgins, I shrunk. I'm stuck in my mug. Oh, my pencil has grown. It's really heavy. Does anyone out there have a giant hand? Whoa, here's a giant hand. Ugh, what's going mad? What's going on? Everything's going mad. The world is topsy-turvy. Look, I've got hair now that I didn't have before. Oh, I don't know if you remember me, but I'm Professor Wright. You know, the one who loves science. Uh, this week, we're going to look at astronomy, the science of space. Have you ever looked up and thought just how amazing the universe is? Well, I've asked Mr. Scientist Know-It-All to join us today and give us a few facts to help us. Mr. Know-it-all? I know it's a lot I do, but I can't see a lot. Space is mind-boggling. There are countless stars and galaxies out there. The nearest one to us is Andromeda Galaxy, and if you wanted to get there, you would need to travel at the speed of light. And even then, it would take a lifetime. Of course, the other problem would be that travelling that fast, you would turn into a wobbly jelly. Oh, thank you for that, Professor Hubble. Space is mind-boggling. There are countless stars and galaxies out there. Oh, you're repeating yourself. The nearest one to us is... Andromeda Galaxy, and if you wanted to get there, you would need to travel. Right, why will leave him talking? Let's have a look with the experiment. Hi, wow, w what a great experiment, but I'm absolutely soaked. I said I'm absolutely soaked. <laughs> Well, learning about our universe is an amazing thing, but... <laughs> Sorry, Bob, I... all this pepper is making me sneeze. But yeah, learning about our universe is amazing, but it's a very wet business. Well, at least for me. But guess what? We can do this experiment in our very own home. All you're going to need is one bowl, some water, and... All the stars and galaxies. Pepper! So what we are going to do, going to pour the water into the bowl. Keep it coming, keep it coming. And that's going to represent space. And all this pepper. That's all the stars, galaxies, the planets, the meteors, black holes, all the craziness you can see in space. As we mix it, and we go round and round and round, and you can see how all these stars are circulating around, just like our very own universe. Isn't it amazing how our universe, how our solar system holds together? I find it very interesting. But what did you make of this experiment? Send us all your pictures to our Sandfield's Facebook page. Let us know how you got on. Hi there, Dr. Hubble back again. 
Ah, look at all these wonderful telescopes. What have we been discovering in our wonderful world today then? My Hubble telescope is great at seeing the wonderful things that you send us. Perhaps you could send me some pictures of your whirlpools, yeah? I can't wait to see them. Let's explore the story. Look at the heavens which you made with your hands. I see the moon and the stars you created. There are over 100,000 million stars. And that's only in our galaxy. And on our planet there are almost 7.6 billion people. Wow! And yet, in Psalm 8 verses 4 we hear that all people are important to God. Every single one. In this universe and throughout all time there is no one like you. No one has your eyes, hair or hands. No one has your smile. No one has exactly the same taste in food, music, sport or dance. No one sees the world exactly as you do. What makes you excited, happy, sad or even cry is completely unique to you. No one else thinks or does things in exactly the same way as you. But please remember, all this is true because God made you. And even though there are billions of people alive today, he knows your name. Hello again. Come on, let's watch the story. More than 3,000 years ago, there lived a man called David. He was no ordinary man. He was a king. He was king of God's people called the Israelites. David loved God and wanted to live his way. Sometimes he got it right, sometimes he got it wrong. But he knew that he could talk to God about whatever happened. Sometimes he had to say sorry to God. Sometimes he needed to ask God to help him. And sometimes he just had to shout about the amazing things God had done. If you look in the Bible, you can find a book called the Psalms. This is where you can discover all the things that David talked to God about. One of the songs David wrote to God was all about the stars, the planets, the sun and the moon. And it goes something like this. Oh God, you are in charge of everything. Your name is amazing and the whole earth knows it. When I look into the night sky, I can see how wonderful you are. I know it, children know it, even toddlers and tiny babies know it. They all sing to you about your great and marvelous deeds. The praises of children cause your enemies to fall silent. Everyone who has turned against you can think of nothing else to say. I think about everything in the sky, the whole breadth of the heavens that you have made. I think about the moon and the stars, the sun and the planets. You put all of these things in their own special place. I ask myself, why do you care about us humans? We are tiny, we are weak, we don't live very long compared to you. And yet we are only second to you. You have given us crowns of glory and honour. You have put us in charge of everything you have made. You put it all <laughs> under our power. The sheep, the cow, every wild animal, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and all the creatures of the ocean. Oh God, you are in charge of everything. Your name is amazing and the whole earth knows it. And that's it. One of David's special songs to God. What do you see when you look at the night sky? Can you see the moon, the stars, the planets, or the Milky Way? When you think about everything in the universe, what do you want to say to God? Something like David's special song. Why not tell God now all about it? Our discovery today is realising how special God has made us. Isn't he fantastic? Well, 
After exploring today's Bible passages, I wonder what you think God might be like. How does it feel to know that God knows your name, even though the universe is so huge? I wonder what questions that you have for God about the universe and everything that he has made. What do you think is the most amazing part of this wonderful universe? Psalm 8 says that God knows you and you are very special to him. Even though we are tiny compared to the universe, God knows all our names and everything about us. Now if you'd like to draw a picture of yourself and the world around us, please send it in to our Facebook page. Maybe you'd like to draw a heart around you and put your name underneath. And if you would like to say a short prayer, remember that prayer is just you having a conversation with God. So you might take some time now to do that. Wow. We've had a good time learning about how amazing God is. But even though we, we might be small things in the universe, he knows each of us by name. He's bigger than the whole universe. Wow. And yet we can know him personally. We're going to hear from a different scientist now. He's going to tell us about the best discovery ever, but actually, this God did come down to earth as a person. That Jesus is God. He's the person who God came down as. And that makes a difference to the challenges and adventures of life. Let's hear from him. What's it like following the stars and following Jesus too? George, what do you think? Yeah, so following Jesus and um, doing science is really interesting. I, um, I do both and I really enjoy doing both. And it's also really important because science answers some of our questions about maybe um, how the world works in certain ways, but it doesn't answer all of our questions like what's right and wrong um, and other kind of moral or ethical questions or questions of meaning and, and purpose. Whereas faith can answer all of those things. It, it can give us answers towards lots of the, the questions that we have to answer in, in life and that we uh, need to have answers to do. How did you start following Jesus? I, I grew up in a Christian home and yeah, I used to go to a very traditional church. In fact, I was a choir boy at one point, which is maybe a slightly more embarrassing revelation. But then I sort of drifted away from my faith. It wasn't really my own faith. Um, and I came back to it in my early teenage years, so when I was about 14, 15, and I realised that uh, it, it kind of all hinged around this conversation I had with someone in a school canteen where I, at the time, was kind of proudly brushed them off and said, oh, well, you know, uh, all this God stuff's all well and good, but actually I'm an agnostic. We can't possibly know unless God shows up. And very kindly and humbly and lovingly, this, this guy pointed out to me that the, the claim of Jesus is that God has shown up in history and that before dismissing God quite so readily as I did, maybe I should look into that a bit more. And when I did, I, yeah, I, I could see it. I could, I could, it, it was clear to me that, that Jesus was who he said he was and that means there's a God and that means we have meaning, we have purpose, we have all of these other things, which is exciting. George, you've given us a lot to think about. Thanks for talking to us. Next time, we'll be looking at light and colour, especially rainbows. So make sure you wear your most rainbowest outfit. And now, drum roll please. we would like to give you the caption challenge. Now, this challenge is where simply put, you remember we did the whole perspective thing with the hand close to the capture, to the picture camera, I mean. <laughs> Do you think you could draw a picture maybe where the scale or perspective isn't quite right? Or just a picture of something really big? And the caption, the words underneath, is simply, God is bigger. 
I'm really sad that our time today is over again. But, good news, not to worry. Tomorrow, we're going to finish with the fabulous Wonder Zone song. And tomorrow we'll be back, so don't forget those rainbow outfits and let's do all the actions and all the songs. And until next time, have fun and keep discovering.